Welcome to Strip Cover Lit. I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we are here with you for this week's edition of Writerly Quote of the Week. Since I took last week, I'm going to give the honors to Adrian this time around. What do we got this week, Adrian? This week's quote comes from Stephen King in On Writing. Oh, if I, if I may interject, On Writing, you say? On Writing. If Carry you on. would like to win a copy of Stephen King's On Writing, you should definitely check out the stripped cover challenge from this week. And uh, let's we'll see about that. Look at that plug. Look I'm a guy. professional Look at this. this I'm amazing. Anyway, carry on, carry on. Uh, page 187. Okay. And I quote... As it happens, I agree with my mother. Profanity and vulgarity is the language of the ignorant and the verbally challenged. Mostly, that is. There are exceptions, including profane aphorisms and great, of great color and vitality. So, profanity and vulgarity, how does that fit into writing? What does that say to you, Dalton? Uh, I'm torn on this one. Right. I really am, because I... Uh believe to get an honest look at someone's character you should not censor them right and <laughs> if any of my college professors are watching this yes and you remember the f-bombs that i dropped not only in class but in a few of my papers as well all of your papers uh, it's not fair um i don't I, I don't know that i okay yeah vulgarity is the language of ignorant and verbally challenged there are moments for all of us where we become ignorant and, and uh, verbally challenged, right? Yes. Uh, I think that that is, it is, it, it tells a lot about a character when that character finally breaks and drops some F-bombs. And I, I could understand saying that uh, ignorant, verbally challenged, yes, they're going to resort to profanity because they have no better way to express their anger, no better way to express what they're trying to uh, get across. But on the other hand, uh, see, well, I, I think that also plays into we curse, we, maybe I'm just generalizing this because it's me and this is how I am, uh, but that's writing, isn't it? Uh, I fall into vulgarity and curse words and profanity when I am angry or just really comfortable. I, uh, I agree with that. It's part of my character. And I think there's a time and place for, for profanity, vulgarity. Uh, let's look at this channel as an example. This is not a place for profanity and vulgarity unless necessary as the literature Bring us forth. We've had to stop several videos, I want you to know. Yes, uh, there is a lot of editing because of profanity and vulgarity, but that is the difference between a professional atmosphere where we're trying to speak about literature and discuss literature. And With if, anyone's ability to watch, right? Yes, and we're trying to keep a wide audience, but I think outside of here in a friendly relationship, where you are comfortable, there is going to be profanity and vulgarity. That's, that's that banter, that back and forth. Right. Um, also, look at the literary greats that went ahead and employed it. Uh, Bukowski, Hemingway. Uh, Stephen King is no, no stranger to an F-bomb. Exactly. And there is a time and place for that. If it's necessary, like I said, if the literature is bringing it forward, absolutely no means we should censor it. No means, because good literature should never be censored. There can be nothing that you are afraid to write about. There can be nothing that you are afraid to write. Exactly. There can be no words that you are afraid to use, because if they are words inherent to that character, that character has to come forth. And let's, let's take a future plan here, because this is something we've discussed possibly doing a video on. E.L. James, Fifty Shades of Grey. I haven't read it. Have you read it? No. No. We've talked about reviewing it, uh, workshopping it, because we think it would be a fun piece to look into. I'm going to assume there's going to be some uncomfortable language coming from that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And But the literature calls for it. Right. Let's look at Flowers for Algernon. Right. Next week's video for Strip Cover Lit. Very much censored in a high school atmosphere. In my high school, they censored Flowers for Algernon. They took black Sharpies and crossed out paragraphs, chapters, because this is profane, 
This is vulgar. We shouldn't be teaching this. That's the meat. That's yeah. what I want to read. That makes me want to read it. Yeah, especially in in a uh, a story that is as heavily Freudian. Yes. As Flowers for Algernon. Um, and and that is in very much the same way. If you were to censor your characters, your situations, um, the things that happen in your story, that that's that's just like censoring a book. It is. It is. Like, like Flowers for Algernon. And that is, that is taking a character, if it's dialogue even, that is taking a character and... Bastardizing. Bastardizing him. That is forcing him to be something he isn't. It's forcing the entire piece to be something that it isn't. Exa and even in high school, I had a good friend, good close friend of mine who never actually came to class. We all had that guy. Therefore, he didn't turn his book in to be censored, so I took his. I had the uncensored copy, but even at a young age... You rebel. I know. 15, 14, however old I was, freshman year, I wanted to read that because that was the good part of the story. Right. That is what drove the story. That is the passion, the emotion. And at no point should we consider censoring it. And I have gone completely off topic for Mr. King here. Well, no, but you're, 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 you're very on topic for, for the situation at hand. Yes. As a writer, to censor your own piece is to bastardize it. And, you know, that seems to be the issue with art in general. Everyone is wanting to censor art because it's not what they agree with. But good art makes you look at something from a different perspective. It makes you uncomfortable. It does, and it should. And excuse my slight, slight rant here. But if you are as ignorant, and is, it's just asinine to me that someone would try to censor something. Yeah. It, it, why use the piece? Why use the piece if you're going to censor it? If it takes away from it, do not censor it. Now, I understand if it's... I, I'm not going to go to work and start dropping F-bombs here and there to my boss. I'm not going to put that in my work report because it's professional. Right. And... But it's not art. But this does bring up this does bring up um, a topic that I am particularly akin to. I submitted a piece to uh, a journal that is fairly prestigious. Prestigious, prestigious. How uh, how should I say that? I'm not sure. They are. They've been around a long time. Very long time. A very long time. And the rejection letter that I got said this piece is well written and intelligent possibly even brilliant uh, but i can't publish it because of the language and violence inherent to it and for me th that was disheartening right um i had i had spent a long time crafting that piece yes and there was nothing in that piece that was uh, unnecessary but Strictly because of the things at play, it was not published. It was passed. And um, that's disappointing. It is disappointing. And uh, not to bolster your writing abilities, which I think Mr. Fort here is a beautiful writer. Well, uh, thank you. My writing is good, too. <laughs> it's, it's disappointing that that wasn't shared. Right. No one else had the chance to read that because they shut it down, and now we're back to stage one. Well, but I, I believe that piece will find a home. I hope so. And um, I don't know. I, it's not the journal's fault, right? You just have to find you have to find that line with everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, and but the, to defend the journal, they that is their thing. This they, this is their requirement. They maintain their integrity. They re maintain their integrity, which is important. Right. And they are saying, first and foremost, before you submit it, I had assumed, this is what we would want to publish right. as a publishing piece. Right, 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 right. And to be able to uh, appreciate the piece, which, exactly. I mean, to get, to get a personalized rejection letter is, is... That's insane. ...is an accomplishment just short, I think, of getting an acceptance letter. I don't even get the letters um, anymore. I just get the, <laughs> the copy and paste emails. So it's, I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, but I, I think that... I can't be angry with the journal because they maintain their integrity, but that piece is going to maintain its integrity as well. Exactly. Uh, and that's, it's just hard to find where you fit sometimes. So take this one for what it is. What, what do you think about Stephen King's quote here? Can we hear it one more time, actually? I, I really would like to hear it. As it happens, I agree with my mother. 
Profanity and vulgarity is the language of the ignorant and the verbally challenged. Mostly, that is. There are exceptions, including profane aphorisms of great color and vitality. You just wanted to use it because it agrees with your mother. Yeah. Okay. Let us know below what you think about this, uh, this quote here. Also, let us know your favorite profanity, your favorite <laughs> vulgarity. We'd love to hear it. This is YouTube, and it's going to find its way in the comment section anyway, I'm sure. Thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching another episode of Strip Cover Lit. Uh, it is part of our goal to bring you literature. Be that from the writer, writer's perspective, the, the reader's perspective, uh, be it from film, books, poetry, no matter what. That's part of our goal here. The best of literature and writing almost every day of the week. Right. Um, so if you, if you notice something here that brought value to your writer's life, We'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. Uh, that really is what pushes us. I mean, we wake up every day, we're like, hey, how many people are actually following? How many people are watching? What can we do here? So make sure you're hitting the subscribe button. Uh, joining us, join us every week, actually. Uh, Monday, we'll start your week off with a six list, get you back into your literary week. Tuesday, we'll hit you with our reader's review. Uh, book review, pretty simple, easy, straightforward. Uh, we'll go back into another six list on Wednesday. Thursday, we do a little bit of something fun. We'll do challenges. We'll do tags. Maybe. Book calls. Maybe a makeup challenge. A makeup challenge. A we'll see what's coming. Uh, Friday, we'll hit you with a writer's quote of the week, get you through the weekend, make you think. Uh, Saturday, we'll hit a writer's workshop of the same book that we covered in the reader's review. And Sunday, we'll try to get our normal lives back in order to come all by, right back on Monday. So make sure not only that you hit the subscribe button, but that you follow us on Twitter at Strip Cover Lit. At Strip Cover. At Strip Cover on Twitter. Because on Facebook, we're at Strip Cover Lit. And on Instagram, we are... On Instagram, we are Strip Cover Lit. I don't have the internet. I know you don't. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, guys, and we'll see you next time.